Hey, welcome to welcome to Ice Age TV. Yeah. Hey, Dad. Hey, Dad. Dad. Hello. Hey, Gary. Yeah. I'll call you right back. I don't know what's going on with this phone, but I'll call you right back. Okay. I'm here in my office watching the. Uh, Watching the storm, wow, this thing's crazy. Look at this thing. I mean, this is bad. They're saying 155 mile an hour wind, so I'm going to call my dad and try to see if he calls back. Now I got a guy trying to sell me something. When does that happen? Yeah, right. But I'll tell you what. I think my Hellcat Charger Challenger. Here he comes, popcorn. Hey, uh, Dad. You there? You there? Yeah, I'm here. Did you hear me? Yeah. Yeah, so I'm just checking in on you to see uh, what's going on down there. I'm watching all the Weather Channel, and it's not looking good. Well, it, it's looking better for us than it was. Really? Sure. Oh, yeah. Well, it's the surge, we're not going to be affected by a surge. In fact, Tampa Bay, old Tampa Bay is basically dry. All the, uh, <laughs> the wind is offshore, is, you know, is blowing offshore, so it's sucking the water right out of the bay. And, yeah. Uh, our, our threats about a storm surge here are gone. There's no... <laughs> We're not going to have a storm surge. The storm surge is going to be down around Sarasota, right yeah. south of us. So we're we're just seeing some light rain off and on right now. The winds aren't that heavy, but they are going to be stronger later this afternoon. But our our problem is probably going to be a loss of power, and probably in the next two or three hours. Yeah. And, so we aren't, you know, we aren't really concerned about what's ahead of us here. We got a lot of rain coming in, but a lot of the uh, water in the uh, bays and the, along the coast has been moved out. So there's plenty of room for runoff. Right. Water. In fact, uh, it had a <clears throat> had some shots a while ago of some marine up there, not too far from where we are. Yeah. Where uh, the water level so low, the boats are sitting on the bottom. Well, <laughs> yeah, but you know the surge is coming. You Do you understand that, that all the water is being sucked out only to push it back in, right? You know that. Well, you, yeah, you, you might have a two or three foot surge. You might have that. Yeah, okay. But that's not a problem. You know, we're eight feet above sea level. Yeah, that's good. Well, how are the winds doing? Well, they're not bad right now, uh, but they will get, they'll be stronger later this afternoon. And the, the risk there, the issue there will be, you know, trees or tree limbs falling or whatever. That, but I'm not, I don't think we're going to have much damage around here. I really yeah. don't. Yeah. I would neither one of my neighbors and on the TV. Again, they're just saying that you're in all likelihood you're going to lose out, lose power sometime in the next two or three hours. Yeah. All right. Well, then it sounds like for the most part you're okay. <clears throat> well, I think so. You know, the uh, the, the uh, storm is just making landfall right now down there around Fort Myers. So Rachel stayed here. And we don't know where Mikey is. His uh, his uh, boss is. They're out uh, running around, you know, helping. <laughs> they're taking uh, trees down right now and limbs down and whatnot right now. Right. So he's gone, and he may be gone for two or three or four days. Rachel doesn't know. Yeah. Yep, yeah, okay. Well, I'm watching this. Are you watching TV and watching the storm? No, oh, yeah. Leah's here with us. David will be back this afternoon, but he's not 
and Leah's staying here because, you know, Ted's gone. Yeah. We just, <clears throat> we wanted to stay here. Yeah. But Safety Harbor, you know, they, uh, that body of water right across the street from her, that's basically sucked dry, true, but it'll come back in. But it'll be, a, you know, it'll have to surge of three to four feet. Yeah. They, they could have some flooding. She, uh, <clears throat> you know, their home there on short the right place, that could get flooded. Right. Because, you know, it's, it sets right at, uh, you're, you're looking right across the road at the, uh, you know, surface of uh, Safety Harbor. So right. when you come back in, it'll probably have a surge of two or three feet, and that's probably enough to um, cause them her some them some flooding. Yeah, no, no, Scout, no, no. Yeah, well, it sounds like you guys are gonna be okay, but I mean, it ain't over yet. Well, no, it's not, and we are. not You know, we're gonna keep watching things all. So, we'll just uh, keep you informed, Gary. Yeah, well, we'll make sure. It'll be interesting if we can get a hold of you once the uh, power goes off and it gets a little windier, so that'll be interesting. Well, it, it could be a problem because uh, with wind, there could be some of the cell towers that go down, too. Right. So we could lose cell, service, cell phone service as well as landline service. Right. That could happen. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, all right. Well, let me let you go and I'll just touch base you later on. How's that sound? That sounds good. But by the way, you know, cousin Liz over there in the villages, they're, uh, they're under severe hurricane, you know, warnings and the eye is probably going to go right over. Wow. <laughs> yeah. If you're looking at that map and you see the eye, I, Going near Orlando, see that, that the village is only about 15 miles. Yeah. North of Good thing you didn't go up there again. Yeah. <laughs> I told her maybe she better think about coming this way. But no, that, that wouldn't be wise either. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, Gary, all right. Well, we'll, uh, we'll just I'll try, stay in touch with you later today, okay? Okay, son. All righty. Bye bye. Bye-bye. Oh, there you go. So, you know, it was all about Tampa getting slammed. Now, if you're my father, it doesn't sound like it's going to be that big a deal. But I'm not sold tonight yet. I think it's going to be a bigger deal than people realize, personally. It's always after the storm hits that you come to realize, like, wow. So stay tuned on more Ice Age TV updates on Hurricane Ian. Hey, welcome to Ice Age TV, and what are we doing now? What am I up to now? The Adventures of the Iceman? Oh, do you want to know? Do you want to know the latest thing I just pulled off? And nobody even knows about it. Not even the kid. All right, so, man, I got a plan. I mean, I got a plan. I'm actually pretty excited. Because one thing it involves is this Ford Maverick. See this Ford Maverick right here? I am blown away. Because that, that blows me away how that music plays when I'm playing my video here. That's crazy. But, but anyways, that that uh, Maverick, guess what I'm going to do? I'm going to hook that Maverick up to this trailer right here. See this trailer? I just looked at the uh, load capacity. This is supposedly a 7,000 GVW trailer and it's saying over here that i can load up to 5700 pounds so that means that's hard to believe this trailer weighs what is that six seven 1300 pounds okay let's just say it weighs 2000 pounds so that maverick believe it or not is set up for 4000 pound tow which I'm just blown away about that. Do you hear my dogs way over the way barking? I mean, this is just incredible how my neighbors, they just let this go on every day. And I say, I can't believe this radio. The radio plays. Yeah, so uh, look here. This is so cool. I ordered this, the 4K tow package. 
it already has electronic brake controller. So back here, it's got the uh, five pin or whatever setup on it. Six pin, seven pin, is it? Three, six, is that right? Seven pin? So yeah, I got a project. And what is it? Well, some may be saying, hey, he's taking the four wheeler for a little ride somewhere, right? Yeah, yeah, let's just say that, okay? Let's just say I'm taking the four wheeler for a little ride. Yeah, I'm gonna go along with that idea, all right? Meanwhile, I'll get my trailer set up. And so tomorrow, tomorrow, Adventure Day with Iceman. Yeah, I'm just calling myself Iceman now because it's Ice Age TV, right? So he's like, oh, come on, dude. Jesus, crap. Yeah, so I'm gonna keep. And actually, this is for sale, okay? So this thing's got bird crap on it from all the damn birds. So I'm going to clean it all up and get it looking fresh and new. Yeah, I got a strategy going on. And I got my other Hondas for sale too. If you watch my video, I got some other Hondas that I tried to sell as well. I mean, I love this Ram truck. In all sincereness, I better take that truck tomorrow with that trailer over there. But I think the Maverick, I'm really curious on how this Maverick pulls. So I'm going to do a YouTube video on the Maverick pulling, I think it's to be about a 3,000 pound trailer. And I'm just, you know, for me, when I sat in Florida, I just kind of balked at the idea this thing would pull a trailer. So I don't know. So follow me along in the adventures of tomorrow. Is that what it's all about? As I clean up my ATV. Oh, yeah, the good news that storm isn't really doing much. Thank God. It looks like my parents would be okay down there. But I mean, here's the thing. It ain't over yet. So, we'll see. But I called my dad earlier, and he made it sound like it wasn't that big a deal. Yeah, look at this here. Can you hear my dog? This is what's crazy. So, my dogs, my dogs are way, way up here in the far corner of my property. And what goes on is, my, my neighbor has, like, pit bull and a pit bull German shepherd. And their dogs literally call my dogs over to do this routine. My dogs don't go over there. I mean, so my dogs, you know, they don't hang out in the neighbor's yards. They hang out here. And I'll just kind of show you, it's kind of really aggravating. So how do you, how do you handle this situation? If you're a homeowner, how do you handle, you got a neighbor that their dogs intentionally call my dogs over to do this barking? I mean, it's just really, aggravating so it's a game see how they run back and forth and the sad part is if those other dogs ever got that that property there my dogs would be dead no doubt in my mind I mean, that male dog he gets violent i mean i've witnessed it so it would be a, it'd be a fight so i don't know it's just to me I and mean, i know if i'm like these neighbors over here got neighbors back on the trees I don't know if I'm hanging out my deck right now. This stuff just drives you nuts every night. Yeah, just incredible. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on back. Come on back. Hey. Hey. Come on back. Scout. Ginger, come on back. Hey. Yeah, what? Come on back. Come on back. Come on back. Yeah, see what I can do. You know, but why aren't they calling their dogs in? I don't get this. Their house, come on back. Come on. Their house is like, you know, their backyard is basically like my backyard. Just picture me hanging out on my deck right now. And where I'm standing, the dogs are going nuts. And I just stand there and watch this all play out. I just befuddles me. We're all different. But anyways, so yeah, so what's going on? Oh, my gosh. You have, I tell you. And get this. The local Dodge dealer calling me, wanting to sell me a brand new red eye jailbreak but he's wanting stupid money for it and i'm just like eh i'm just not there so he wants a lot of money but then he's calling me saying he's got people standing there wanting to pay him big money but but then he's calling me i don't get that conversation yeah so you know so the whole point is he wants premium money which if i even bought it i got mixed feelings on this right now just because i tell you i just think that the heyday of the money's going away so I think, if you, like for me right now, I'm sitting in my shop. And yeah, do I think those things have really good value? 
I do, but the but the ball game is on these cars. You know, I put a lot of money into this car here, where I can sell and get my money back right away. That car there, I can turn and sell that car. Danger is you pay a guy premium price for a Hellcat Charger Red Eye. I think you're stuck because I don't think it's I don't think it's ready yet. I think it's next year. So the dilemma is. You're sitting on a lot of money, I think, to next spring, summer, to get any money out of it. I'm not saying I could buy it, turn around and sell it, but I really don't want to do that. I mean, I want to, I want to make money off of it. I'd be like to buy it and then make 20, 30, 40, 50 grand off it. That's kind of where I am right now and buying these high performance specialty cars. You know, this isn't about me keeping them. It's just too much money. But I have an opportunity to buy a brand, but he wants too much. Here's, it's a $104,000 car. He wants a buck twenty for it. Whew, that's a lot. I mean, that's a lot. See, I'd rather get the deal at eighty or ninety in a red eye used, which I think then you can flip it and get a buck twenty, buck thirty for it in your own. That's where I am. So for me, you pay him a buck twenty. There's nothing there. You're a long way out. Get that buck fifty. I don't see that right now because the product's still being made, still available, and I just think the market's still too fresh. All right. So what am I doing? What am I up to? Some people watch my videos and really pay attention. They know what I'm doing. For those who don't watch it, oh well. you will find out maybe tomorrow. But maybe, I don't know. If my schedule doesn't work tomorrow, it won't be maybe till Friday. But I'm super excited about that. That Loom trailer. Little did I know about that trailer. How this would play out if I could use the Maverick. Yeah, I could use the Maverick. And I mean, I don't know. I just have mixed feelings. I don't know. Does this truck pull that trailer or is the trailer pull it and boy if you're a trailer person you get this conversation i've had many trucks and cars and trailers and let me tell you what if you're driving the wrong vehicle the trailer is pushing you and controlling you you ain't pulling the trailer yeah all right let's clean it up let's go before you know you doesn't look that dirty look there's just bird crap all over this thing and you know it's crazy these things aren't even in the market. You can't even find them. So right now, I actually think I'm going to make money on this thing. I mean, I'm not lying. They're not available. So if, you, if you're a, a guy going hunting this season and you want a nice unit, here it is. And in all sincereness, by the time you go to dealership and buy it and they put freight and setup and you pay taxes on it, you're going to be at the same number I'm at. So... I think you got a great deal. And I'm throwing in the rear moose cage. And some of you may be like, well, what are you getting rid of this for? Well, because <laughs> I got a brand new gator. I don't really need this now. So I'm going to cash out of this. Then I got the Honda Rebel for sale and the Honda Afro Twin. Why? The kid grew, grew out of the Honda Rebel faster than I thought, in all reality. I mean, good Lord, everybody knows that story. If everybody's following my YouTube channel, then you know that <laughs> the uh, borderline... The Indian Scout Bobber, let's just first talk about the Honda, you know, the Honda Rebel 500. The kid just loves, just loves this vehicle. So, you know, the Honda Rebel, she looks at that thing like, yeah, right, Dad. It's like me telling her to drive a, drive a little Honda Civic now. And I, mean, I just love that. Yeah, like it. I really like the Harley product again. What's going on with me? I told you before, my challenge in life is I buy the same thing back. That's what I do. I like this fire guy going. This fire is just without wood. It burns up so fast. But it's all good. Better than me. You have no idea how many years I've cut down trees and cut up wood and chopped wood. And pfft, that was a freaking project. So anyways, so, so yeah, so the kid... She's growing on the Honda Rebel, so for me now, I'm not gonna be riding around a Honda Rebel, a Honda product. I feel like now, you know, get rid of both Hondas. So I'm on the page right now. If I get rid of the two Hondas, three. Okay, and you know it's incredible. The Bobber down Tennessee, she'd probably part with that too. In all reality, I can tell you now, if we go to Tennessee to go ride motorcycles, I can promise you, she's gonna be more a page. I want to take the street bob. So, you know, for me, I'm about kind of, you know, two upping, which means two Harleys together or two Indians together. But if she's now on the page and I really don't want to ride the Indian Scout 
bobber, I mean, it isn't like we can't ride a Harley with an Indy, and I get all that, but at the same time, you know, so for me right now, I'm on the page already of Honda, uh, Rebel gone, Ever Twin gone, the Rancher's gone, maybe the bobber. Okay, there's four things right now. If my wife would just kind of, I mean, all sincereness, I know right now, if I say, hey, honey, you got the Forerunner? She loves driving the Ranger. I think the uh, Mustang Mach E needs to go, the white one, and the blue one. For me, just for me, starting to kind of, people watch my channel, they're like, dude, you buy so much stuff. Yeah, but <laughs> I get rid of stuff too. So right now, you know, ideal situation would be the Mus Mustang Mach E's are gone. And and then here, in all fairness and seriousness, if somebody told me right now they'd pay me fifty k or fifty k, you know, for what I over what I paid for that vehicle right there, I'd say call me. They'd be like fifty k over, and whoever gets it, sincerely, you know, I really want to get a hundred k out of it, but I think that's gonna be next year, and I'd have to research it before I'd agree to that. But if somebody said right now fifty k from what you paid for it, I'd do my research. This right here, if somebody told me right now they give me 50K more than I paid for it, I'd probably take it. You know, sincerely, I would take it. I don't think I'm going to get that. I think that heritage is that's very possible. But it may be a little too early. This here, I just like this GT500. I don't feel guilty if I go driving around. That is just too much of a rare car. You don't drive that car. I mean, you just park it, keep it. It's going to make you a lot of money. So, yeah, this here keep this so yeah i'd have no problem right now between motorcycles atv cars i mean i could easily dump i just told you two mustang mach -E i could i could dump that that's four seven i could easily dump eight type of vehicles seven and why because i think the economic times are changing and i think the guy that has cash next year is gonna have a blast for me sincerely if any property pops up down in tennessee that seems like a deal Man, I'll be on the top of that. I'll be all over that. And take a time out of cars for a while. That works for me. I mean, I'd even part with a Raptor. If somebody offered me good money at Raptor, he'd be gone. I'd love the Ram trucks. You know, so for me, I have no problem. Like, down the the, the Bronco, I just, I don't know. I think, the, I think I regret it. If I got rid of the Bronco, I think I'd regret that. Like, because it's just such a nice vehicle. I got a great deal on it. I really like it. You know, the mach I ain't worried about that. Ford Raptor's nice. He'll be making a ton more of those. Ain't worried about that. And it's all about the money in the back, in the back there. You know, I think I'd regret getting the GT. I think I'd regret getting rid of this again. I already bought it back once. So, this here, so practical. So, anyways, follow me along on my next adventure. What is it? What am I doing next? Yeah. Watch my videos, you'll figure it out. All right, let's clean this up, get the before and after view. You look at this thing. I mean, I've already put it on Craigslist. This thing here has a whopping, how many miles? Look at that here, it's so crazy. So let's see here, 25 miles, 25 miles. This thing is like brand new. It is brand new. It's a great machine. It's got the electronic shift, just so everybody's Watch my video. See here, like the bird crap. Power steering, electronic shift. This is the high end unit. Good luck finding this color. Look at that. Look at down below. It's brand new. So, once again, I'm going to wash it up, show it to you later. If you have any friends looking for a nice ATV, here it is. Honda Rebel. Here it is. It's all on Craigslist and the Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, listings. And I got the uh, Afro Twin on Cycle Trader as well. So, you know, for anybody out there that's watching my YouTube channel and have friends, and I might give them stuff away because it's so crazy is all people go, well, I can get that for X. Like, you can't. Why don't you go to a dealer and you pay for setup and freight and taxes? You know, just like this here. Look at this. I put the Yashimura, Yashimura exhaust on this. I put the factory Honda. This thing's beautiful. It's an ABS SE edition. So this is the high-end edition with the LED and the fairing. And then the Afro Twin is the uh, DCTES Sport, bigger gas tank. It's the highest end wheels. Uh, it has a tubeless tire. 
So you don't get a, if you get a flat, you can plug it, not to worry about a tube. It's got the, you know, the high end uh, suspension, you know, adjustable suspension. You know, it's a very high end. It's the highest end after you can get. It's a beautiful bike. So, uh, so anybody who watch my YouTube channel has friends. I'm letting go some cherry stuff. That thing has like 350 miles. This has like 750 miles. This stuff's all brand new. And yeah, I'm gonna. I mean, I'm I'm wanting brand new prices for it because it's hard to get this stuff in the market. But add this, add that. That adds everything up. And then once again, you know what people forget about you buy the sales tax is your problem. That ain't my problem. You figure it out. You know. So when you buy it from me, you go to DMV and whatever, whatever. That's your ball game. So, so you know, just the sales tax alone will save you a lot of money. Set up and freight. Blah blah blah. Dogs are back at it, you hear them? All right, follow me along. Hope my phone moving around didn't make you air sick, car sick, because for me, I and the phone gets bumped around so much, I get nauseous, and I have to turn it off. All right, follow me along. Oh, this reminds me, this reminds me of a few years ago. I sold my one of my other ATVs, a rancher, a really great guy, and I used my power washer to clean it, and oh my gosh, huge mistake. I mean, a damn thing wouldn't start. And I got everything, all the electronics, all wet. So the guy came out to check it out, and the thing wouldn't run right. So a big no-no out there if I'm going to be using power washers on these units. You've got to be really careful you spray it. Cause, and I called my local, I called my favorite dealer, Tim Brook Honda. And the uh, service guy is such a cool guy out there. Hey, what am I using? I'm using this spray nine, which is literally just lifts all the, the bird stuff off and everything, you know. It's such a great product, and it doesn't harm things if you know how to use it correctly. You don't use it in the sun and let it set up. But look at me; it's not the you know, it's the evening time. But anyways, so I power washed the whole unit, and then the guy came out to check it out. And the next morning, I go to start it up, and it wouldn't uh, go into gear correctly. It wouldn't; uh, it just wouldn't run. You know, so I'd call my selling dealer, and the service guy out there is so cool, great guy. And he's like, you power washed that thing last night, didn't you? And I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, well, <laughs> there's your first problem. He's like, you shouldn't have done that, man. I'm like, yeah, I know. I've been bad. He's like, look, you're going to have to pull your electrical connections out, and you're going to have to uh, dry them out. And you know what? He was exactly right. I took all the electrical connections out, and I blew them out with my air gun. And, yep, sure enough. After everything aired out and dried out, thing ran fine. But then the battery was dead. So for the gentleman that bought it for me, I uh, I took it out there and I got a new battery for him. And I and I literally delivered this unit to him down in Alexandria, Virginia. Great guy, and uh, he's just a really nice guy, and he so appreciated that. And he even even texted me later and just. Uh, told me how great the unit was and he went hunting with it and all his buddies were like wow you got this thing and that thing is like brand new so uh it was my daughter's and my daughter grew out of that as well so uh so yeah tonight i'm just gonna do the smart thing and just kind of hose her down and wash her and not get crazy you know and this spray nine will do a great job of lifting all the dirt off and everything so uh follow me along here am i clean and night of the honda foreman 2022 this is a 2022 foreman just so you know anybody watching my channel has a friend that wants a nice honda product and these hondas you buy them keep them and you'll sell them I mean, they sell so fast and you get good money out of them and i used to buy polaris stuff and oh man hard lesson to buy in polaris stuff sorry polaris guys but yep not the same all right, you're not know, thinking, let me power wash this thing off and kind of show you how this Spray 9 just does such a good job on just lifting the dirt off. I mean, it's just such a nice line. Do I even wash it? I, I am. But it just picks all this stuff right off. It's just such a great product. And like I say, as long as you don't put this stuff in the sun, you know, if you uh, clean your vehicle in the evening time out of the sun using this stuff and let it set up in the paint, you're going to be all right. The danger is it's a hot day. And you come out here and do this. You wish you're sitting out, you know, like a black car. You're out in the sun all day. 
you know, baking in the sun. You don't know way. You can't do that. You're going to have problems. You're going to be like, oh my God, that spray nine stuff ruined my paint. Yeah, it will. So no. Cooler environment, out in the shade, cooler day, out of the sun. You know, that's the key. And the sun just cleans up so well. You know anybody here wonder what I do? It's so funny. People comment about my, what I do for a profession. And, and then for me, I tell you all the time, you know, my true passion is just motors, 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 trailers. I love trailers too, you know, this over there. And, and so for me, I just like taking care of my stuff. I mean, this, this here, yeah, I kind of let it go too far, but it's the birds. But overall, I just enjoy. That's, that was how I started out very young. Yeah, did I clean my motorcycles more than I rode them? Yeah. <laughs> Not really, but I used to get all my dirt bikes all trashed, and I'd get them all taken apart. And in the winter months, I'd take them down to my dad's basement and take it all apart, and cleaned all up so it looked like brand new. If you follow me around, if you follow me around, you get such nice stuff because I just take care of my stuff. And uh, that's just what I enjoy doing. Keeps you out of trouble. Sadly, you know, for me, sadly, so many people in life are going down the path of drinking and, you know, their social evening is just drinking and doing not much. It's so bad. And I can only hope anybody out to watch my channel, you know, knows that you just can't go down that path in life. It's so easy to do as you get older. And people just sit around all day and drink. And it's sad what drinking does to you. It's not good. So try to find something else to do. Just get outside. Yeah, a lot of people just don't get outside. So, but I get all the, the spray nine off. So now it's all about getting my sponge and cleaning it all up. You know, now I'm sitting here talking. But you know, I need to wash my trailers. Yeah, 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 right. <laughs> All right, now it's time to hose her down. And she's cleaned up really good. I mean, she wasn't really dirty. But good Lord, I barely used this thing. Yeah, it's the Iceman's challenges. Saw it sit in the showroom. And I got excited about it. And, yep, I bought it. You know, I got to talk my videos more than ever. In all sincereness... If I kind of get the right number out of this, then I didn't I didn't actually lose a, a penny. I'm not embellishing on that. So if I get the right number, I did all right. Do I have to sell it? I don't. But I just kind of know where it's going with that having that gator now. It's just going to sit and collect dust. Battery's going to die. You don't treat the fuel. It just isn't going to get used. And you know what? There's somebody out there, I'm sure, that could benefit from this machine where it's it's brand new. I mean, it's, literally, it's a brand new machine. It's barely been used, so anybody gets it, they're going to bring in Honda. And uh, at the end of the day, they're not going to do any better shopping around for ones. I don't think you're going to find one, personally, if you know what I mean. Got a little mud there. Where'd that come from, right? You can't have mud on this thing, man. So, uh, oh my goodness, what's motivated me to do this, right? Well, something came down today that I pulled off out of the blue. And for me, I'm just on the page more than ever. That if I get something, I gotta get, I gotta give things up. That's just where I am. More than ever in my life, there's so much on the page that I don't want more, I want less. And. Yeah, some people be laughing at that comment. Like, yeah, sure, dude. You're gonna, you have less. Well, in all sincereness, I do to the degree. And uh, but yeah, I hear you loud and clear. Yeah. Well, are you drinking? Are you drinking tonight, Ice Man? <laughs> no. No. I'm not doing that. I'm having fun cleaning my machine, which I think that somebody's really going to enjoy. I mean, I know one thing. I was watching my YouTube channel, and I was in position to get an ATV right now, and I was going to run for a nice Honda. I mean, I'd be all over this thing. Yeah, I'd be all over it, because this thing's already got the rear rack on it. You know, I mean, it's just a great machine. And I'm being very reasonable for the masking out of it, because... Uh, and the good news is, these Hondas, they just don't, like I said, they don't lose value. 
All right, I think it looks pretty damn good. What do you all think? And it's a great looking machine. I just love this color. I always kind of like these type of colors. There was a nice Forerunner up at the uh, Toyota dealership like a few years ago. And oh my gosh, it came in. I wanted it. It was a used Forerunner like that. And it was that color. And oh my, it was gone. It was gone. You know, there's just some vehicles that come in at dealerships and there's like poof. The guys see up there at the uh, Leesburg Dulles Dodge up here, they're claiming that people are all over that red eye Challenger Charger. Parent here, I think you're, I think you know, kind of borderline. Who knows the real story? But what I'm getting from GM is a gentleman ordered a a octane red Hellcat Charger red eye, and he turned it into the uh, jailbreak edition. He didn't do a very good job on it though. See, the jailbreak edition is all about being really funky, where you can put you can just build your own car and you can kind of be unique to yourself. So you can get stupid on the in colored interior, stupid, stupid on the wheels, stupid on the, the paint scheme. And for me, you wouldn't know it's a jailbreak. It looks just like a Hellcat Red Eye Charger because the guy didn't do anything unique. Black interior, boring. I would have done a, done a peanut butter or a demonic. I would have done the red demonic interior. And I would have done like a different... Uh, stripes on it black stripes boring wheels black wheels boring i would have done brass monkey i would have done things to make the car look different and they didn't so there's the first thing for me they're calling me wonder if i want it in all sincereness if i told them i'd pay him msrp for it i'd get it i mean i'm not lying that phone call came but it doesn't jump out at me so the guy who ordered it he didn't do a very good job for me because the jailbreak is all about you being, you know, you're supposed to be in jail. You're, you're reckless. You're, you know, you're recluse or whatever you want to call. So, anyways, apparently the GM got wind from the guy that he's just taking it and he's flipping it. So, meaning the guy was going to pay MSRP. But for me, in all sincereness, there's a fine line there. If a guy orders the car and he wants the car, I don't know if you have the right to take that away from him. But at the same time, more than ever, people are getting, yeah, crazy numbers. So the claim is that the guy was going to flip it, so he lost the deal. And I've heard these stories before, you know, so I don't know. I don't know the whole story. You know, you never know the whole story. There would be two stories. And maybe the guy just pulled out of it because he got nervous. I can get that as well. Or what guys do is I talked about this a while back. on The F-150 Lightning Atlas Blue that I would have taken instead of the black was I think what happens is these things come in. And then the dealer says, come on and get it. And they're like, well, hold on a second. And they're like, what do you mean, hold on a second? Well, hold on a second. And then it gets to be disclosed. Well, I'm waiting for a guy to commit to buy it from me before I buy it. That's probably what played out. And then when you're the GM of dealership, it's like, nah, we're not playing that game. Come down and buy it or just go and buy by. So that could happen too. Hey, how do, you, how do we go from the Honda four wheeler and I tell these damn conversations? Yeah, I know. I hear you. But yeah, if that, if that Charger Hellcat Red, I would have come in with that type of. Uh, you know, setup theme I just told you, it would have been more unique. Then I'd have been more on the page of maybe, but at the same time, eh, I just got other things going on. Yeah, right. What else do I have going on? So yeah, I think that conversation should be continued. Let me wipe it down, spray it down, or I should say, blow it off my blower, get it all cleaned up, and we'll end this evening edition of Ice Age here in a second. All right, I think that's going to be a wrap on the Ford Ford. Jesus Christ, I think I do need a drink on the Honda Foreman ES power steering setup 2022 camouflage or tan. I think you call it tan or I can't think of the name of that color, but that's that's a great looking unit, isn't it? Yeah, so uh, it's the ball game tomorrow. Am I wearing anything that might give it away? Maybe. Maybe not. Stay tuned. Everybody have a great, blessed evening.